All right, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, it's been hectic having uh, Ethernet problems and internet issues over at my mother-in-law's house where I'm staying now. What's up, Tube? Honestly, there's not that bad of a delay here, so the internet's really not that bad. Um, more Ethernet issues. What's up, Trader Jeremiah? Who get this? Jeff Two Way. What's up, Two Way? Champ is here. Two Way. What's up, man? Uh, Scott Tiny. Good morning. Sid, good morning. All right, so two-way, we had U.S. stock futures reporting to a higher Wall Street open following two days of losses for the Dow and S&P 500. Despite those declines, the Dow was holding just above the 26,000 level as of Wednesday's close. The June gains from the Dow and S&P 500 after a terrible May remain the largest since January. Um, so yeah, so we've had some volatility for sure in the market lately. Um, we'll see what we get for it today. First one we can kind of pull up here to look at is, let's see, OPGN. I haven't really made a list today. Um, OPGN making a big penny stock breakout here, uh, gapping up from 40 cents to 60 cents, went as high as 83 cents as well. Uh, but for OPGN, they announced new data demonstrating clinical utility for antibiotic-resistant urinary tract infection patient management and for rapid carbapenem-resistant bacteria outbreak detection. Float of 16 million, so pretty small float, not ridiculously tiny or anything, but it's a penny stock going on some runs. Looks like a momentum move here, so we'll see what we get with that one. We also have AMTX, AMTX, which is... A Metis India plant achieves record $4 million monthly domestic biodiesel revenue as shipments begin under OMC contract float of $14 million. So another small float here. Not that much volatility or movement with this one. I don't like it as much. We have a shipping stock, Dry Ships here, DRYS. And if you've been trading for a significant amount of time, you've probably heard of DRYS. I know this one went really parabolic about three years ago where it went up to a hundred and then dropped back down to like five or six dollars within two days and so this is a previous parabolic mover for drives uh, DRYS it's a shipping stock and uh, yeah so it's gapping up from 316 to 393 and the reason it is is because the shareholders SP2 holdings offer four dollars per share for a merger float of 16 million and so yeah so like it says here watch for shipping sympathy place other shipping stocks include ship what's the other one um oh i want to say it's lfin but i don't think it is maybe not um what's some other shipping stocks i know we have ship i'm trying to think of these shipping movers here uh, i'm sure the chat will hit me up with some so yeah we can watch for maybe coda former runner there as well but we also have CHFS CHF CHFS gapping up from 316 to 340 here and CHF Solutions sponsored AATS session on post cardiac surgery and they highlighted the benefit of using the Aquadex Flex Flow system following cardiac surgery a float of 2.2 million so a very small float for this one for CHFS and so we'll see where that one can go small float overall here uh, we also have, let's see if we get anything else. That's it for Two Way's list. Um, let's look at the trade ideas gap list here. Appreciate it, Two Way. Thanks, brother. Appreciate the news drop. We also have Red Robin here. Red Robin making some pretty big runs here, and I'm pretty sure this one's tradable for me. Um, so let's look up the news in Red Robin here. I've never really traded this one before. Um, never really traded this one before. But you can see this one's pretty volatile. Um, all right, so there was a Red Robin amended 13D filing from Vintage Capital that showed an 11.6% stake in the company. It also included a disclosure of a vintage letter to the company board suggesting the board should, quote, immediately commence a comprehensive review of strategic alternatives is what that one says um and so interesting here that's making this one push up they also have uh yeah that letter demanding strategic alternatives we got a few people talking about hyping this thing up so we'll see what we get with red robin as well
Yeah, Red Robin has some good burgers, man. There's, there's they have some fire burgers for sure. Uh, we also have RH, RHU, which is Restoration Hardware, gapping up some. A little bit bigger cap of a stock here. Uh, first quarter earnings making this thing move. Pretty big gap up here. It's up, uh, let's see. It's up like roughly 20, 25%, something in, probably in the middle, really. Um, so we'll see what RH can do. We have CODA, like I mentioned, CODA looks good. And this is second quarter revenue, making CODA push up here. But I'll watch CODA. I've traded this one before as well. Um, let's see what else we get. And so, yeah, I mean, that's really it for now. So, yeah, I'll put my watch list out here and see. Uh, we have OPGN. We got Red Robin. We got uh, AMD, as always. But we've, we have CODA. We have uh, DLYS. cannabis plays in there like I always do that's my list for today but yeah I was having internet issues this morning and my son put also put fruity pebbles in my uh, in my coffee this morning very fun very fun Yeah, man, it was it was interesting for sure. All right, so we got. I mean, we have some other options. We got like CRC here, gapping up some WLL, gapping up some. We got SQ, we got Roku, ROKU, cannabis plays like CDC, Cron have been pretty decent for me. Oh, TOPS is what y'all are naming. Uh, yeah, TOPS. Appreciate it, Tiny. I knew there was another one. I knew there was another one that was pretty famous, Tops. Yeah, that one is uh, very uh, well-known in the trading world, specifically the momentum penny stock world. TOPS, they've all been known to get pretty hyped up here. All right, I got to go help my wife get my son ready for school, so I'll be back in like a minute or so. All right, I am back. I am back. Let's see what we got here. Also, a bill was passed to allow Oregon cannabis to be transported. 
across Oregon state lines, which may boost the whole sector. Interesting. All right. So yeah, sorry guys, I got started a little bit late today. Um, having internet issues over here. All right, guys. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, so Red Robin, which is RRGB Thigh Slapper, is, uh, they, they found out a firm had a decent, a well-known firm had a decent stake, I think it was like 11 or 12 percent stake in Red Robin, a uh, very well-known investor or firm had a, had a decent sized stake in Red Robin, that's what they found out, and so then they also found a letter of some sort that is hyping up Red Robin as well, so. That's kind of the news for that one. IFRX, IFRX. Yeah, we're getting a little bit of a volume site. Uh, we want to see a little bit more volume to a company. You can also look at the SPY here. Um, the SPY is up decent. I mean, it's not that far. I mean, it's almost up to, you know, 290 isn't that far away. And so if it gets to 290, it's effectively only has $5 to go before it hits lifetime highs. <laughs> Tani says it's weird to be up this early. You must not have kids. Kids, uh, at this point with my kids, it's like no matter what, even if it's, even if I don't have to wake up early, like my wife will give me a lot of times one day to sleep in. And even on my day to sleep in, I'm up at like eight o'clock in the morning. Can't do anything about it now. I like, I, I'm a morning person for the most part. It's weird though, like I never used to drink coffee. Um, I never used to drink coffee and the reason I never did was because coffee would make me calm and a lot of times if I drank a lot of caffeine, I would actually fall asleep. Very strange. Um, after talking to my doctor, he thinks that it could be a sign of ADHD where coffee slows me down, but I don't know. But now I drink coffee and I need my coffee in the morning, but appreciate it, Tiny. Thank you. Yeah, Father's Day is here. Yeah, I've gotten a bad luck, run of luck at Father's Day. Um, the last few years, uh, my daughter's birthday is, is uh, for father, let's just say my daughter's birthday overpowers Father's Day because it's right around the same time. You know, so usually... Uh, we're focusing on her birthday. One one year Father's Day and my uh, her birthday was on the same day. <laughs> yeah, it's funny. They gave me a test to see if I had ADHD at the doctor and um it was a trick test. So they give you this they give you this uh, questionnaire and you're supposed to answer it as accurately as possible but the real test is to see whether you write your name at the top that's the real test which I very uh, obviously failed I heard really though Yeah, look at IFRX. Two-way called this one out. He's accurate about it. So IFRX is up from 328 to 350. So it's up about 22 cents or so here. It doesn't look bad. We can look up the news for IFRX here to see what we got going on. All right, so it sounds like this was positive clinical trial data. Um, 
So INFX treated their first patient in the phase 2A clinical trial with a lead candidate IFX1 and Pyoderma. I'm not even going to attempt to pronounce that. What's up, Mitch? Yeah, let's get Mitch in here. Yo, yo, what's up, man? All right, so let's look at what else we got. We got LJPC. I'm seeing that on Mitch's chart at least. LJPC, uh, PRVB. Oh, look at PRVB. I actually didn't catch this one. Let's see how many of this is actually tradable. Let's see what my account balance is at as well. Let's see what my account balance is at. Check that out. All right, so I broke $200 in profits. Nice. So I broke $200 in profits, and uh, I'm up to 203.75, so just under $204 in net profits. So I will take it. I will take it. $200. I got a $200 cushion in my account now. So happy with that for sure. What's up, Mitch? You there, bro? What's up, bro? All right, guys, we got Mitch here. What's going on, traders? How we doing? How we doing? It's time to bounce back. Nice. That's right. Two hundred and forty thousand in buying power. Yeah, I'm spoiled. I got a I got a pro account, so I have a twelve thousand dollar max loss, two hundred and forty k in buying power. Um, Chris is yeah. like, can I use like twenty five thousand? <laughs> <laughs> Can I just like borrow that much? <laughs> um, Anthony has a good question here. He said, good morning. I just got some money recently and I want to buy a computer. Any suggestions on what kind I should get for trading? I'm actually right. I'm currently in the market for a laptop, but I have a really nice desktop that was like less than $900 um, for everything. And so looks like I got to work on that video. Yeah, man. Um, so laptop or desktop, Anthony? It all depends, man. It all depends on what you're trying to do. Um, you know, I always recommend if you aren't really an on-the-go trader, first kind of taking a desktop approach. Desktop, that'll be cheaper as well. Yep, cheaper as first. And then, you know, trading going well for you. You're starting to take trips, starting to take journeys. You know, John starts going on vacation, and that's why he feels more all right, well, you know, I need that laptop so I can continue doing what I'm doing. Um, you know, having a laptop can be a positive and a negative. Uh, you're going to have limited screen space, so you're going to need to have some uh, separate screens. Yep. But and that's what I'm going to do. People like, some people like continuing to use the laptop and then just have multiple screens with their laptop. Right. Um, you can go for a, a really good laptop and it can do what you need but um, it's always gonna be a little bit more expensive than yep. let's say uh, buying a desktop or even building one. Um, right. you know, I, I built my computer and I, I think I definitely made the right decision. Um, I don't think a laptop would have been this fast for now three or four years. Um, and uh, you know, I still, I still have a laptop. I use it when I'm on the go, um, but I, I definitely would prefer my home base desktop over. Me too. My laptop. Hundred percent. And he, the the thing about it is that you can buy like this is the laptop I'm getting. Um, I've I've decided on this laptop. Pretty safe decision on this laptop. Um, it's a Lenovo Legion Y530, and uh, super dope laptop. It's a gaming laptop, but it's it doesn't look super gamerish. It's not like multicolored or anything like that. I7 16 gigs. Um, I think it's a hybrid HD with a solid state drive, smaller space as well, but it's a hybrid with an H HHD and a solid state drive. And so it'll run quick, but it'll also have a lot of storage, you know, capabilities with the conventional hard drive. And I can get this computer. I'm going to buy it for less than, uh, 
Less than a thousand, I think, is what I'm going to get it for. I think I'm going to get it for like right around a thousand, maybe eleven hundred with sixteen gigs. But um, as for my desktop and what I'm going to do with that, like I said, I'm going to be taking it out of town. I'm going to buy external monitors. Like you can buy fifteen-inch external monitors for like a hundred and twenty bucks, and they come with stands and everything. They connect via USB three, and that way you'll have multiple monitors on your laptop, and it'll just be it'll be easier to deal with. But yeah, if you're getting a desktop, I think I have an Inspiron 3670 uh, i7 16 gig. Um, it, and it works great. I mean, I never really have any problems with this PC. It can hold three huge monitors. It's got a good graphics card. Yeah, I have shippers. Um... I have an SSD card and a kind of slow uh, hard drive, a one terabyte drive. So yeah. I've got to, you know, I think it's what you kind of need. Um, you know, SSD cards are really expensive. You don't need the craziest SSD. You just need something that's going to hold your programs right. and your operating system. And then you can put, you know, like photos, videos, stuff like that on a kind of slower drive. Right. I mean, you know, hard drives, they're beneficial. They can hold more space for cheaper, for much, much cheaper, like a conventional hard drive. But it's going to make it, it's going to be a little bit slower, you know, because they have the mechanics of a conventional hard drive. And they're, they're also going to wear out easier, in which a solid state drive isn't going to, it's going to be much more expensive per space, but it's going to, it's not going to wear out as easy and it's going to make your computer run much faster as well. And so that's why I want to, you know, I could get a regular, I don't mind, like it depends. Like I might get an eight gig laptop and then upgrade in the future if I feel like I need it. But hard drive is a little bit harder to upgrade and to change out in a laptop as opposed to a RAM stick where you can just swap those out easily. I completely agree with that. Um, when it comes to laptop, I feel like you have to make the decision on the memory side from the beginning. Not many laptops give you the ability to add memory. For sure. A lot of them are going to have that ability blocked off. That's why I'm getting the Lenovo, though, is because if I, even if I want to get up to like 64 RAM, yeah, they, uh, uh, I can't. They give, you, they give you the ability. Right, for sure. And my friend trades My friend trades with the Lenovo. Yeah, I just like the way they look, man. Like I said, this is the one I'm getting. I think it, it's pretty cool. Hey, yeah, there's, yeah, there's a bunch of different legions. Um, honestly, though, like the new, like I'm probably just going to get the base model one, which is the 530. The 540 is coming out as well. But um, I, I need the laptop before then. And I don't, like, I here's the thing. I don't really game on laptops. Like, I'm not going to actually game on this laptop. And so I don't need the super newest specs with regard to gaming because I'm not going to game. I just need a decent enough uh, chip that can run platforms, decent enough RAM, and decent enough processor. Like, that's all I need. And if it has that, then it'll get the job done for trading. For sure. Yeah. 100% AZ. Yeah, I mean, if you think about it, like a hard drive has to, it has to do the entire movement of a hard drive. SSD does it. And so hard drives are, are you know, they're going to wear out. You know, they're going to wear out eventually, which, you know, if you have something like I have Google Drive backing up all my important programs, but if not, you know, you're kind of risking it. But again, I mean, my computer right now, it has a conventional, I think it's one terabyte as well. Um, it doesn't have SSD, it's just a conventional drive. So, and it works fine, but. Yeah, I like the combo. The combo is not bad. You can get a one terabyte drive for 50 bucks and then spend your money on the SSD card. And those are all gonna run you around uh, close to 150, 180. Right. Which is fine, you know. I, I would rather it just honestly for boot up speed alone. Is yeah, what, that's why know. I love it. I, I my computer could literally crash the whole thing. I could turn it on and turn it back on, get my trading programs up in less than two minutes time. Yeah, man, that's what I'm saying. Like that's I don't get that with my computer. <laughs> my computer's yeah. the old man booting up, you know. 
Yep. So that, that's why I don't worry about programs too much crashing on me. I remember when I first started trading, I traded with an I3. And I used to trade DOS. And I had trade ideas running, two screens. And boy, was it a, a, a reality wake up when I uh, lost like $300 because my computer froze up. Yeah. Just kind of realized, hey, well, it's, it's okay to trade on an I3 computer, but you can't be trying to go to that other level where you have multiple screens yeah. and a lot of programs running because you're just going to overwork your computer and it's not going to give you the performance that you need. Yeah, so man. That's why I went, I went with an i7 after that. And from there on, you shouldn't have to worry. Yeah. I could have a thousand. I think I5 can, I5 can even work for you. Oh yeah, no, i5, honestly, think about it like this, right? My first trading computer that I had multiple monitors on, I had two huge 27-inch monitors, was an i3 8 gig desktop, you know? And it worked, you know, that i3 8 gig desktop, it worked, man, it worked. I could stream on it, I would stream on it sometimes. I would, uh, I had two huge monitors and I would have multiple different programs up and it would work. Eventually it would crash though, like every now and then, but it, for the most part, you know, my streaming would hold up, and you could look at my really old streams. Um, eventually, I upgraded to an XPS, and then I ended up giving the XPS to my mom, and I bought this one. But uh, yeah, I mean, it all you could i five will definitely work, especially if you have like eight or sixteen gigs. You know, i five yeah. will definitely work. Ooh, definitely needed that coffee today. Yeah, for sure. CRWD. Yeah, man, we got the shipping stocks moving today. We got DRYS, man. DRYS up. Tops. TOPS. We got a... Uh, CRWD looking good. OPGN in the penny stock world looking good. We got RH, Restoration Hardware, CODA gapping up some as well. Honestly, I will say this I'm disappointed. I can't trade Red Robin today. It's not tradable. <laughs> it's not tradable, man. Look at Red Robin. It looks good, man. It looks good. Red Robin. Yeah, man. But it's not tradable. Unfortunately. <laughs> Hey, that's how it goes, man. We'll, there's plenty of this. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys. Well, we got 10 minutes left. 10 minutes. Let's do this. Like I said... 14 day green streak, 14 day green streak. We'll see if we can keep it going. Um, any advice on trading futures? I've heard a lot of good things about it. I understand the basics of it, but don't follow too many future traders. Any advice? I'm the wrong person to give you advice on futures trading. I just don't know enough about it. I'm almost solely stocks. Um, I do trade some options. Um, I trade a little bit of options, but mostly just stick to stocks. I, I, I'll put it this way. I just stick to what works for me at least. I'm not saying futures won't work for you, but for me, I've never tried them and, and I'm just sticking to what I, what I know works for me. Um, and so futures, I've heard, I've heard a lot of people trying to get me to trade FX and futures, but never taking the leap just because it's just, it's a completely new genre of trading. And I don't know if I feel like investing that much time in it when this is working for me, I, I guess I don't want to focus on other stuff and then lose any edge I have in trading while I do have an edge. So I just stick to what works and try to kind of ignore yeah, everything else. I've been doing a little more research and from my research, um, the more and more we go into different asset class other than stocks, the more you're going to run into algorithmic traders. Um, about 80% of Forex and that kind of trading um, is done by algorithmic traders. It's actually only done by three major firms, about 80% of the trades. 
So you're only talking about 20% that's going to be retail. And you're going to be trying to battle investors that have a lot more money than you and have advantages of resources to information that we just don't have. Um, so that's why I don't trade Forex. Um, and I, I know how hard it is to trade when you don't have all the information. Um, so that's why I tend to lean more to day trading where I can have uh, spurts of momentum where really it doesn't really matter what the big investors are really thinking of this because it's spurts of momentum, it's quick ins, quick outs, and that's how we're able to capture our money and not worry about those big investors changing the price for us. Yeah, 100%. All right, guys, so we're about to get ready. Um, if you want to join our public Discord channel, I'll post this link here as well. Like I said, Mitch and I, we just try to give everybody everything for free. You know, that's what we do. We just try to give everybody everything for free. Uh, not charging anybody for anything and so one of the subsets of that is our free trading chat on discord and so if you want to be a part of our day trading chat room for free um, just join us we have over 400 members at this point I think we have almost 450 and so there's the link if you want to check that out I hey, appreciate it Chris man thanks for the support brother yeah, man. I mean, we're we're not we're not experts or gurus or anything. We're just uh, we just let people see what it's really like, you know. But yeah, there's the link in the chat if you want to join our Discord. And we're about to start getting ready here. What's everybody's main watch today? I think mine is probably. Uh, let's see. I mean, I like to watch AMD. Um, wait a minute. CRWD, recent IPO, might be interesting as well. Um, yeah. You keep LK on watch. Share that one. Had a nice. Yeah, Mike. Nice yeah, I just realized. Uh, sorry, bro. No, you're good. What'd you say? Um, we keep on watch. Okay. I haven't looked at that one in a few days. I would look pretty strong yesterday, though. Yeah, honestly, I'm starting to get better at reading it. It has a lot of tendencies to go up and bottom to ranges. So you have to look for big pullbacks to get in on the stock, whether you're going long or short. Yeah, for sure. And it's one of those things where um, it could have momentum on both sides. It's a recent IPO, so the range is just going to be crazy. Um, yeah, pretty. One of the reasons I think I've been doing much better is because I've been also taking VWAP bounces. That's one of the reasons I am happy with the challenge is because it allowed me to, or the, the competition is because it kind of allowed me to trade with the, uh, you know, without fear of learning. And so I kind of was able to transition into trading VWAP bounces as well. Um, I don't have, I don't trade them with as much conviction as I do VWAP fades. Basically, I don't use the big enough sizing with VWAP bounces, but I have been trading them more and getting into those more. And they've been working pretty well. Um, and so we'll see what we get today. And we have about three and a half minutes left. Hey, no, wor no worries, Edward. Thanks, brother. Welcome in. Disney trade from yesterday. Yeah, I, heard, I think I heard you talking about Disney yesterday. Let's see. Disney looking strong now, yeah. Disney's up in pre-market. I didn't even notice that. It's up to 138.50. Yeah, it's a strong company now. Yeah, man. Like Disney's taking over media. Well, one of the biggest thing is that Disney decided uh, about two or three years ago that they were going to make their move into streaming and media. 100%. And as we saw, they made the right acquisitions. And then they put themselves in position with Hulu. 
giving themselves information, statistics, data. They use all that to create their streaming service on Disney. Yeah, I mean and now they they went and uh, kind of used their shareholder strength to take over Hulu also. Right. I, I, I think honestly, I think Disney, I think it's still pretty cheap relative to kind of how Disney is as well. And the reason I say that is because if you think about Disney's scope in the media world at this point, like Disney owns Marvel, Disney owns Star Wars, you know, Disney owns Hulu now and it owns uh, all this different stuff. And so those are pretty serious, you know, moves for Disney. And so long term, I think Disney's going to do well and I think it'll probably go up from here. But yeah, short I term. saw Disney a lot of time when it was in the 100 range. Everyone would recommend the buy. Reason why they were looking two or three years down the line, knowing that Disney was heading towards the stream service, because Disney's a, a great profitable company. They just need kind of that reinvention, uh, innovation. And that's what they got here. They moved themselves in the right sector, giving themselves some strength and investor. Uh, it depends. It, it depends on the setup. And when you think about it overall, you know, from 100 to 140, it's a big move. Yeah, man. Strong move. Especially too. I mean, when you're valued at, at that rate. Yeah. I mean, it's roughly what, like 30%? I mean, like Disney's value, but... <laughs> I'm sure it's in the hundred billions. Yeah, man. Here, let's look. I'm sure it's something ridiculous like that. <laughs> uh, roughly 150 billion. Actually, that was this was three years ago when shares were at 94 cents per share. So it's probably it's probably roughly 200 billion. I would say maybe a little bit more now. All right, guys, we got five seconds, so let's do this. Let's do this, guys. Let's have some fun. Stick to your system. Take the trades. All right. Dropping, we got OPG and up. See if we can get a little bit more profit in my account today. Like I said, I'm up effect. I'm officially up over two hundred dollars in net profit in this account. Goal is to get to about a thousand dollars so I can do that withdrawal. That'll be a fun video. All right, trying to get a pop up here in EMPH. You up, babe? All right, AMD flushing down here. Big drop, just broke the lows, looking really weak. I bet you they had a moving average crossover here, probably as well. Yeah, crossover just now happened on AMD. Um, and so honestly, it looks good here. I bet you it'll keep dropping. Let's see where the previous day's close price is. It is at 32.18. All right, so yeah, I mean, look at that previous day's close. That's the level to watch. Got pretty low there. Um, RKDA, I mean, RKDA is tradable for us. It's a penny stock on TEFs. I like it for a bounce here, honestly. Maybe I'm wrong. Don't know much about it, but I mean it's a huge drop. It's down like two dollars per share. It's at four dollars now. All right, so for AMD, I mean I'll look for a pullback to the BWAP here. 
All right, MPH is up there, but I'm holding. I saw a strong momentum bounce back. 40,000 shares bought up at 1742. All right, we might have some VWAP bounces on the cannabis plays like Cron and CGC. All right, so AMD looking weak here. It's right around the previous day's close. If it can get up to 33, I'll consider risking um, around 40 cents as my risk. Maybe uh, really 41, 42 cents doesn't look bad. It's just about good risk reward. So 41 will give me an eight cent risk and then a reward level down to, let's see, 33 down to 18. Yeah, it's just about two to one, just about. Um, Nice little drop here for AMD. Yeah, so AMD is looking pretty weak here. I'm waiting for a pullback to the VWAP. If we can get one, I'll, I'll definitely take it for AMD. Hey, nice tiny congrats you did it hey nice tiny happy for you you did it good job nice work all right so right now here's the thing so right now for amd we have the vwap at 3230 beautiful risk level we can use 3240 as our risk maybe 3241 and then our reward down is down to like 3208 so we have a 20 cent reward 10 cent risk beautiful two to one trade and uh, so I'm going to look for a pullback to the VWAP is what I'm looking for with AMD. It's effectively broken under the previous day's close price as well. And so it may get pretty weak here. Hey, what's up, Isaac? What's up, brother? All right, we also have CGC pulling back to the VWAP, which could be a VWAP bounce here. We got CGC pulling back, and this could very likely be a VWAP bounce with a risk of probably 86 or so, maybe 90, probably be decent. Kind of a rough spread. Well, looks like CGC would have failed. Yeah, look at that crack. Man, what's the spa doing? Yeah, cannabis stock's dropping here pretty significantly too. Look at uh look at CGC man. CGC's about to break lows. There it goes. Getting a huge drop. Man, that was like if I'm glad I didn't take that bounce. That would have been worst case scenario there. Just a massive drop. Look at that thing. Just tank. Spy's actually squeezing up here, honestly. Spy's pushing up. Big bullish move. Wow. Okay, I would take this on the spy or on AMD, but look at the spy here. Wow. Um, I could take a small size here for AMD if you can get up to 20s, but man. Just a crazy move there. What happened? Maybe I should have taken it because that was a nice fade. Uh, I mean, I could have taken it, but the spy. It's just looking really strong. Nice wheelhouse. Congrats, man. Nice job. Look, yeah, look at AMD with this fade, man. Ugh, that one's going to hurt. That one's going to hurt. Yeah, that's going to hurt. That was a beautiful fade for AMD, too. Perfect. Um, it's okay. Let's look at other stuff. We got SQ, Roku, and then really didn't fade quite yet here. Roku setting up for a VWAP fade. It just depends on what the overall market does here. And so if uh, if we can get up to 21, I'll, I'll slowly start adding to AMD and look to jump in, but it may be a little bit too late here. That fade was probably the one. We also have Roku here, and I like Roku because, you know, we got a pretty solid risk level that's 
stayed firm in this one. And so risk, 6, 70, 60, 50, 40 would be 40 cents. And then reward would be, let's see, you know, 83 cents. So not bad. Risk reward there. I'm trying to get an AMD, but it's just not quite getting as high anymore. That first fade was the right one. Missed out on it. Now we could also look at Roku. I think AMD's done with the fade. It's already followed through. Uh, let's see. If I do get in Roku, though, I need a small share size here. What was my list today? Yeah, there goes AMD. I'm gonna. That one's going to bug me. But honestly, the spy acting like it was kind of kept me from it, and that's okay, you know. But there goes the fade. And so the bullish, this is one of those days where you just don't know if AMD is going to follow the spy or not. And when the spy was breaking highs, AMD was pushing up. And there goes Roku. Yeah, I'm missing a few today, which is okay. Um, but yeah, some days, you know, you'll, you'll look at some of these stocks, and sometimes, man, I just bumped my knee. Uh, you'll look at some of these stocks, and sometimes they'll follow the spy really accurately, and then sometimes they will uh, go against the spy. And today is one of those days that AMD went against the spy, and so it would have been a really nice fade. But there wasn't really a way for me to know if it was trading with or against the spy beforehand. Mm. There goes Roku as well. It's all right. Just gonna move on. Look for some other plays here. Cron, uh, beautiful fade. Roku faded nicely as well. Let's look at the cannabis plays. If uh, CGC can pull back to the VWAP area at 66, I could still consider it with a risk of uh, 80, 90 or so. So my risk would be about 35 cents and my reward would be not that much, about 45 cents. Unless I used a smaller risk level. Let's see about Cron. Maybe Cron's going to be better risk reward than this one. 22 entry. 17 reward. And then 35 risk. That's much better. I'll take Cron if it gets up there. Yeah, 45. Oh, no, wait, this is only a 25 cent risk and a 45 cent reward. So with CGC, I'll take it. I, my math is wrong. I mean, with the AMD, if it gets back up there, I could still use, you know, 27, 30 is my risk. I don't mind that. It's like nine cents of risk. Maybe 33, so about 11 cents. Still good reward, too. What's everybody else watching? I missed a few this morning, but that's okay. Uh, DIYS. Yeah, DRYS starting to possibly pull a red to green move here. DRYS, look for this possible red to green move. I can't trade it, but you guys might be able to. So it's starting to push over, break these highs. The highs are really at 93 and it's at 95 now. The big level here is the whole dollar though at four. And so I think it's got to break that, but look for volume to come in and look for this thing to start squeezing up for DRYS. Here's some volume, 96, 97. Again, like I said, the four dollar whole dollar break is gonna be the big key level there. But yeah, shout out to Scott. Because I would have missed that move too. Alright, well CGC is just a no-go anymore. Um Kron's a little bit better here. If it can pull back to 18, use 35 as risk. About 15 cents and then from 17 down to 85, about 32 cents. 
Not bad. Two to one at least. All right, we got a rejection there at the full dollar of four on DRYS. All right, so we're getting some squeeze ups here. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna look for AMD, just a little scalp play here with 200 shares. If it can slowly start getting in there, um, I can slowly start scaling into AMD. And like I said, I could use that 30 level as my risk with a 20 maximum entry and about a uh, 20 cent reward target. So I've got about 10 cents of risk and 20 cents of reward for specifically AMD here. And so we'll see if we can get that move. We also have Cron here. Watching HTZ here. Sorry, right, Iron Man, you're in timeout. The reason you're in timeout is because the last time you were here, you were kind of trolling people, so. All right, holding off on HCZ for right now. Popped over where I wanted to get in. Well, there's a few trades that we could possibly make here. We got CGC. He's not banned, he's just in timeout. It just depends. Um, we got CGC, which doesn't look bad. I could use 74 as my risk. If I enter in at 50, risk is about 24 cents. Doesn't look bad. Have to use 75 as my risk though. Um, and then reward target would be, if 25 cents is my risk. Not quite, we get about 35 cents of reward. We need a 60 entry. So, which I don't hate for CGC. Yeah, AMD was looking getting a lot of weakness. They're looking pretty weak there. Uh, every time I'm about to short one of these moves, I hesitated with this one, and there it goes. I was just about to jump in with 100 shears, though, but I'll look for Kron instead. I like Kron because. It's right around that previous closing price. All right, so we'll look for CGC to get up there. Oh wait, Mitch, you said you're in something, man. No, no. No, I'm not in anything. Okay. I was thinking about HCZ, but I never took it. Still zero trades for me. Yeah, I don't mind TLRY either. I see you watching. Yeah, that I was one. looking at TLRY. I was yeah. keeping an eye on. The only thing that worries me is if it breaks 81, then it's putting in higher highs. That's the only thing that kind of concerns me, and then it's it could squeeze up, but. We miss CGC. Yeah, no, CGC is the one I was like, I was just talking about this one. It, I'm still watching it. I was trying to debate. The only problem with it is that, and maybe I'm talking myself out of it, but it looks like I did, was that I would have to get in at like 55 with a 25 cent risk, or at 50 with a 25 cent risk of 75, and then your reward target's only 35 cents, and so the risk reward's not great with it. That's the only thing that kept me from getting into it, but today's one of those days where I'm missing some stuff, so... It is what it is. We can still look at Kron to see if Kron's going to make that move up there. 
And if crime can get up to 17, I can start uh, scaling into that one too. Yeah, it looks like CGC really followed through there. Unfortunate. I was also looking at Roku and SQ too, so I've missed a bunch today, man. They both followed through really nicely. Or not Roku, or SQ didn't, but Roku, CGC, and AMD, both beautiful fades. So while, while I'm sitting here waiting, it's still only 20 minutes in, but while I'm sitting here waiting, if anybody wants to uh, use the same broker and platform that Mitch and I use, go check out TradeNet. Uh, you can currently get their intro package, their base package, for only $3.99, and it comes with a lot of huge, ridiculous benefits here. One of them is that you can day trade as much as you want. On TradeNet's platform, TEFs, there's no PDT rule. You can day trade as much as you want and get around the PDT. There's also You also get 14000 in buying power with their base account. You get fourteen k in buying power to trade with, which is a huge deal, extremely cheap. And you get a decent platform and pretty cheap commissions. You know, you saw me trade a few times yesterday and my commissions yesterday was like less than 10 or 15 bucks. And so ridiculously cheap commissions with small size as well. And so if you're interested in using the same broker and platform that we use, like I said, you know, you get their base package for $3.99, which is ridiculously cheap and it works like a prop firm. And so you have $700 in max losses, so you can't go under 13,300, but you know, like I said, you're only paying $3.99 and you're getting a max loss of $700. Uh, yeah, I'm in the States. And so if you want to check it out, straight up garage doors, uh, there's the link. I also have a walkthrough video if you want to see. And I really do break down the pros and cons in this walkthrough video. And so if you want to see that, I'll post that link here as well for you to go check out. It's a great way to help support the channel too. But there's the link if you want to check out the walkthrough where I really do break down their pros and cons. The biggest con, I'll just say it here, is that most penny stocks aren't tradable. That's easily the biggest flaw. Alright, so I'm going to start scaling into AMD with about 100 shares here. I'm just kind of getting a little starter here and looking to continue to add back to it as it pops up to 32.14. Maintaining that risk of around 25 or so is what I'm going to do. And so we'll see what we get. Just a little, little trade here in case it does start to really flush here. And if it doesn't, I can kind of slowly scale back to it and add to it um, as it kind of moves. But if we get a flush here, you know, 100 shares is 100 shares. I'll take it, I guess. And if it can bounce back, I can add back to it. That's kind of the goal here. Yeah, no worries. Hold on. I think my wife's having trouble getting in. You got in? Carol? All right, well, um, we're getting another squeeze back up. I was gonna, you know, I was getting close to being able to just take a little scalping trade off of this one, but we're getting a little bit of a bounce back in AMD here. Um, just a little, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's possible, Isaac. Like I said, I mean, I'm only in with 100 shares, and uh, as it moves up, I can add back to it and keep a pretty uh, set risk, a very kind of finite risk there at 25 or so. But it's just 100 shares at this point, and my entry is decent enough to where I'm okay. I'm just going to look to see if we can get a breakdown, maybe add to it, but it's a very small trade at this point. Yeah, 
right, there's the bounce. Like I said, I could add back to it. Looking to add on it and bounces back to the $15 level. All right. Starter put on here for HCZ. Risk right now is 66. Yeah, I'm short in it, Isaac. Uh, just looking for a bounce back. It's been maintaining this range pretty well. Um, and so looking to just scale into it up to the VWAP. But like I said, it's a very small size to begin with. And so it's just a little feeler trade in this one. Nice, Netron. You uh, longer short in HTZ? Short. Okay. All right, just got squeezed out there. I got it faked out. Watching TLRY here. Yeah, I feel like I just missed that HTC, but that's how it goes. Yeah, it happens, brother. Yeah. Got a bad entry, um, horrible fail. And so that pushed me out of the trade. All right, so we're getting a little bit of a pop up here. Like I said, if it can get up to 11 or 12s, I'll add another 100 shares. Just to get, This is just going to be a little uh, base hit trade. I'm not trying to go crazy with this one because I don't have as much conviction in this one, to be honest. And so we'll see what we get. But regardless, it's just going to be a small ball trade. Cron ever pull back there? I was looking for Cron, and I'll probably still take Cron if it can pull back to like 03 here. Um, if it can pull back to 03, I really like the risk and reward in the CRON trade, but we need that pullback to that level. If we don't get the pullback, then you know there's no point in it. So we need the pullback to that level for CRON at 1703, and then we can use this 1715 as our risk. Our risk is 12 cents. Really like that risk level, very obvious. A lot of resistance at that point and so a lot of confirmation in that risk level at 17 uh, 15 or so and so I do like that one we'll see what we get here but that's what we're kind of shooting for with AMD I mean like I said if it gets up to 32 13 I could add some sizing back and that's kind of the goal here at this point I'm not really worried about it either way I'm just kind of waiting for my uh, my entries here for this one and so we'll see very small ball trade at this point we're up to 08 like I said, we get up to 10, I'll add a little bit more. There's 08s, 10s, 11s. All right, so I'm gonna add another 200 to this one. And so now we got 200 and I'll add another 100 as well. Um, if we can get that hold there up to 3212, 3213. So that's what I'm in with now. Very small position. Like I said, this is my, uh, I, yesterday was my 14th green day in a row. And this is kind of the strategy I've been using to take advantage of some of these moves. And so. I don't mind AMD here, it doesn't look really terrible. Um, 
Like I said, though, not as much conviction in this one, so just going to kind of take it slow here. Maintain that uh, at 25 risk level for about 10 cents or so. There's 12s. What's my entry here? My entry's got to be... Nine. Mm, could be better, could be worse. This is my entry right here. So not terrible. We'll see. I can add another hundred if it gets up there. Let's see if we can bring my entry up a little bit. Fourteens, fifteens, sixteens. I'm gonna add one more hundred share lot with three hundred shares, and then see if we can get this drop. Snap is squeezing up there. Like I said, I don't really hate CRON here as well. If CRON can really get this bounce back, I mean, that's kind of what I'm looking for with CRON. Um, let's see, what do I have? 100 and I have 300 shares. Okay, so I can take half off if it follows through here. Probably at 32 is where I would take some off. There's 09s, 08s, 07s, 06. Like I said, if we can get that drop down to 32 is really what I'm looking for. I just like it, lots of resistance above it. Yeah, I mean, I don't really use the MACD. I mean, I know that the, the crossover works. I've traded it a bunch, but I mean, it's just the way I trade it. And, uh, you know, we could all disagree. Uh, it, you know, it may very well squeeze up. I'm not 100% sure. But I just like the resistance above it now, and it's a very small trade, regardless of what happens. So you might be right, uh, Isaac. I just like the resistance that it has above it now. Should be decent. HTZ squeeze it up there. Yeah, I mean, at this point, it's just good risk reward, and that's all I'm trying to do. It, it, it's just about a range trade is really what I'm looking at. It just It's maintaining this range, and so I'm just looking for a quick breakdown to 32. There's six. Like I said, I want to see it really get down to... Uh, all right, I'll take half off there, and I'm still holding 150. It's just a little small ball trade, Isaac. It's just... Uh, Got to see if we can get that low of the day break is what we're really kind of shooting for here. And so, I mean, even this breakdown was good enough to, uh, there we go. I'm gonna take another 50 off here. Now I just got that 100 left. I've banked enough to where I'm not super worried about this one anymore. And this is the range. You know, when I say a range bound trade, Isaac, this is this is kind of the range I'm attacking here. Um, I'm just attacking this range, and I can draw out the range that I mean here. Um, you have this big support level right here. And so this is really the range I'm attacking right here. And that's why I, that's why I remember saying, like, I'll, I'll slowly scale into it. I don't mind scaling into it up until that level and so i'm just attacking that range because a lot of times even if it doesn't end up breaking down here it's at least going to kind of pivot back to this level 
And so when it pivots back to that level, I can take profits and protect myself. And so that's all I'm looking for is for it to bounce up and then come back down like it did. Um, now I've, I only have 100 shares left at this point. And so I can either, uh, yeah, mostly a scalping method. It's just a range bound scalping method for sure. And it, like I said, this is like my 14th. If, if I end today green, it's my 15th green day in a row. And so it's very accurate. Um, and uh, I just try to set myself up with good risk reward. And I'll give it that chance to break under these lows here. Like I'll give it the chance, but it's unlikely. And it's probably just gonna bounce back and squeeze up here as well, but I'll give it the chance. And I've scaled out of it enough to where even if it goes against me here, I can very comfortably just exit the trade. But if it's gonna bounce, this is the most likely level that it's going to bounce. And at the very least, at least I build a little bit of a cushion up on the day. Uh, yes. Danny. And like I said, I could add back. I'm probably just going to let the range play work out. And I'm going to really look for Kron to get down here up to uh, the VWAP. If Kron can get to the VWAP, I'll consider it too. So I've got 100 shares. We'll just look to see if uh, AMD can really break down here under the whole dollar is what we're shooting for. That whole dollar is going to act as some support. But uh, that's what we're kind of looking at here. Probably should have taken a little bit bigger sizing, uh, considering AMD's small range on the day. But uh, green is green. Probably should have taken a little bit bigger size, though. I don't know if Kron's going to give me the entry. I was waiting for Kron to, back, to bounce back up here, and it just never did for that entry. Unfortunate, but it is what it is. All right, so here's the whole, the, uh, whole dollar break under 32. And so we'll see if we get a flush down here, but if it's gonna bounce again, this is the most likely level that it's going to bounce at. And so we'll give it a chance, but if it bounces, I can get out for a small gain. And even if it goes my way, it'll probably be a small win, but we'll give it the chance too. Yeah, AMD, man. You know me. That's my baby. <laughs> I got to get back up to bigger sizing, though. Ever since the competition, I've kind of scaled down. And I can add to it here, but I don't really like this squeeze. Yep, exactly, man. <laughs> that range play, it works, man. And that's the biggest thing. Like, it works. Um, the range bound moves work, you know. Uh, the trade net competition was the last few weeks and they give you a huge demo account and they let you trade with a, a pretty big demo account for two weeks and the top 10 p uh, places in the competition win free funded accounts and yeah i lost but but uh it was fun to trade with uh, a competition account for a week or two and so here's the range thing that i was talking about there's that range i drew out you can see how these support and resistance lines are uh, following each other. And this is kind of the range I typically take. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big loser, Isaac. My biggest fear with the competition though is that some of my bad habits would transfer over to my real account. But apparently it's like the opposite. Hey, appreciate it, Isaac. Yeah, man, we're getting up there, brother. Where'd Mitch go?
Yo, what's up, Miss? You there, bro? Yeah, man, just quiet. It's not much for me. Yeah, a little slow. I already took a big hit. Got to be smart. Yeah, just take it slow. I don't see too much action. I mean, I got it in this AMD range trade, but aside from this, it's a little dull. All right, there's 32s. We'll see if we can get this breakdown. And see, the range is still following. Like, you can see, I drew this line a while back, and look how accurately it went right up to that level. I could have added to it there, but, yeah, it is what it is. Looking for a flush, I could take a little bit more off here. There's 95s. Let's see if we get that breakdown, 94s. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and take another 50 off, and then I'm just gonna, really gonna let this last little bit work here. Um, that's the range bound trade I was looking for. And again, like just to show everybody how I kind of approach these, I just take advantage of this range right here. And I try to short it around the top and then cover most of my position by the time it hits the bottom here. And ideally, we'd like to see it continue breaking down here like this. But, you know, even if it doesn't, as long as you're taking profits right around the lows here, then you're still fine. And you can still, you know, kind of use it like an ATM cover some around the lows, add back to it around the highs, you know, short some more at the highs, cover around the lows, and just kind of rinse and repeat that until it squeezes you out. But at that point, you should have built up some profits, and that's kind of how I attack these. I um, mean, it works. You know, it works. Like I said, this is my uh, 15th green day in a row, and I've streamed it all live, uh, how I kind of approach this, but it's been working for sure. And there's a nice breakdown to 85s here. We'll see if we can get forty dollars in gains. But... Down for you, man. You probably get it. Huh? Spy breaking down here. Yeah, there's the wash in the spy. Yeah, it should be beneficial for AMD. This is what I'm holding. All right, we're pretty extended on the downside. I'm gonna go ahead and cover this last little bit here. $36 gain today, I'll take it. Small gain, but that was the breakdown I was looking for. Kind of, you know, didn't do too shabby with 300 shares. Made about uh, the equivalent of 10, 15, 10, 11 cents per share after scaling out and protecting myself. So I'll take it. But yeah, that's the breakdown I was looking for. And, you know, I could add back to it on this bounce back up. But it, it, this is one of those things. Like, it's not – I don't – it's not that I don't trust the MACD. It's that it kind of clouds out too much of my info, you know. Like, I can – I know certain stocks well enough to uh, – I know – I understand these certain stocks well enough to kind of attack that same range-bound trade. And I'm not saying the MACD doesn't work. I'm just saying that, you know, when you trade a certain stock over and over again, you kind of learn how it moves to a certain extent. And uh, I know AMD is very rangy. It'll stay in that range, and it, it'll a lot of times that range will stay solid, and it'll give you pretty good risk reward. And so I just kind of attack that range consistently. Uh, another thing that we're actually getting here, though, it, which might be the reason the MACD you know was wrong, is because the spy really flushed here, which is kind of unexpected. You know, you're not really going to expect the spy to flush this much, and that definitely benefited me in this AMD trade. Um, the SPY got really weak, and so, you know, mid-cap stock like AMD is going to get dragged down typically from it. And so there are a few different reasons, but um, I like these range-bound plays. And they're short-term, so regardless of what it does long-term, most of the time I'm out by the time anything significant happens. Maybe should have held a little bit, scaled in a little bit, maybe sold a little bit too soon, but yeah, I'll take it.
All right, and like AMD could bounce back here and we could get another fade. But yeah, it looks like that was the right move to get out of HTZ, Mitch. That thing squeezed up big. Check a look at my graph. Let's see. Let go ahead and import this data from my trades. Let's see from yesterday. That. Let's import this to Trader View. See, this is a pretty solid graph, man. I gotta give myself credit here. It's a pretty solid graph. Check this out. Look at that. Pretty solid. I'll, I'll take it. Look at that. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Yeah, after today, that's fifteen green days in a row. Sixty, probably around sixty-five percent accuracy. Not bad. Made about a thousand dollars in gross profits in the last month. I'll take it. Hesitation is real. Yeah, man. Honestly, I missed like three different plays this morning. You know, I, I watched three stocks fade. You could look at AMD and see just all the fades today already. I missed the first move on that. I missed uh, CGC as well. Uh, Roku. Look at Roku too. So I missed CGC, Roku, and AMD. All three of them just beautiful fades. Um, Roku, CGC was really nice, and then Roku, just a big fade too. So we got a bunch of them. Yeah, CGC, I mean, if CGC can climb back to 42.27, looks pretty good.
HTZ squeezing up, yeah, for sure. And we also have CGC, which slowly is moving back to the VWAP. Like, CGC is at 42. Um, 42.27 is right around where the VWAP is. All right, Isaac, have a good day, brother. Go Saints. Go Saints, man. You know? How long have I been trading? Uh, two years, two and a half years. Big order coming in for AMD on the downside of $4,100 sell order with a $4,600 buy order as well. So that probably even out really. And time in sales. Yeah, I mean, CGC, like I said, what I would be looking at for this one at least is like a pullback to the VWAP here at 42.30. And then you could use like, you could use 50 as your risk, maybe 55. You could also use 60 right here, which I like. It just depends on what the risk reward is in this one. So let me clear the drawing set. So basically if you get in here and then you use this level here as your risk, you have about a 35 cent risk. And so your risk is 35 cents. You're risking 35 cents if you enter in short here. And then your reward would be, let's see, 30, plus 30 so about 60 cent reward 35 cent risk and so your rewards bigger than your risk it's not quite two to one but it's probably still doable um, roughly two to one a little bit worse than two to one uh, risk uh, reward to risk and so it doesn't look bad it's just about whether you get a good entry or not you could also compensate for that by getting in a little bit later at maybe you know 35 or so you get in at 35 there you know that way you can have a 30 cent risk and about a 65 cent reward so you're better than two to one if you get in at 35. how long did it take me to become profitable uh years it took years um and that's one of the things it, it, it's uh for most people that's going to be what it is i mean most people if you stick with it and you have that perseverance to stick with it you know your chances of being successful go up dramatically but most people don't and most people end up losing money and then quitting um, but yeah, it took me years. Uh, that would be, I'm just using the VWAP for a VWAP fade entry SID um, is what I would be using. I don't know. I'll honestly, to be honest, uh, I'm probably not going to take it. But I'm just kind of walking you through what I would do if I was going to take it. I would probably use 4230, 4235 as my entry, and then set that 4260 level as my risk, and then use 4170 as my reward target. So it's it's about two to one uh, reward to risk in that one, and it's not terrible. Um, but again, I, I'm probably not going to take it. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. There's nothing. All right, brother. I'll probably end up closing it down sometime soon here. Yeah, you guys take care. Later, bro. Yeah, I mean, come to the dark side, Sid. I mean... Listen, man, I used to only go long. I used to be a sole long bias trader where I only went long. I never shorted stocks. Uh, once I got trade net, uh, once I got a trade net account, I was actually able to short. Shorting just pulled me in and it just seemed much more logical. Like I think, I think when weakness starts to show on a chart, it drops much faster uh, than a long setup, at least in my opinion. I think panic is a stronger emotion than hope is. 
And so with that, shorts are going to follow through a little bit better. But again, I'm biased for sure. I've just, I've done a lot better with shorting. You know, I've, I've been able to read it a lot better and understand when rejections are going to happen. And so shorting has definitely been the most beneficial trading method for me. Um, again, I'm not saying longs don't work, obviously, but short term, I like shorting for sure. Yeah, look at ZOM, penny stock starting to move. I didn't even notice that one. Yeah, HTZ still running up, so up to 1713. Now we also have AMD pulling back to the VWAP already. And the thing I like about this, if I clear this out, if I clear this out and you look at AMD here, I'm not saying you should, but if you get in at the VWAP there, you could use the previous fade as your risk. And that's something I love doing. I love using this previous fade right here as my risk. And so you enter in here at eight and your risk is about 10 cents. And then your reward is from eight down to 85. So over 20 cent reward. So this is your risk, regardless of whether it works, this is your risk and this is your reward. And so your reward's just much bigger here. Uh, and that's kind of the way I like to approach these subsequent fades. And even if they're not super accurate, I mean, this one might squeeze up and stop people out and, and you know, fail, trap shorts. But, you know, just the way they trade, uh, it's good risk reward. So even if you're right less than half the time, you'll still be profitable for the most part, depending on um, if you stick with it. And there's the drop. Still sticking in that range. Not too shabby. I'm proud of my stats here. Yeah, these are my stats, guys. So you can see uh, performance Monday. I'm just barely profitable with an average gate of $6. Tuesday, nicely, $386 in gains on Tuesday. Wednesday, barely. Thursday, 85 Friday, big gains on Friday. And that's usually from one trade. Um, Watch, you can see the stocks. Like if I go to instrument here, it'll show you the stocks I do the best with. CGC, easily the stock I did the best with. Uh, AMRN, number two. CRON, number three. STNE. AMD is solid in fifth place on my profitable stocks for a $102 gain. YNDX, we got Macy's here, NBV, a few other ones. Uh, but for the worst stocks, on average, is SQ, which I need to pay attention to that. Uh, Zoom, ZM, and CC. Those have been the worst stocks, but not honestly, they're not that bad here. You know, little bitty gains on those stocks, so not too shabby. You can see a total gain loss in the last month of eighty nine, eight hundred ninety six dollars and twenty five cents. I'll take it. Um, like I said, after today's trades, uh, it would be roughly sixty five percent accuracy. So I'll take it. 14 max consecutive wins. I'll take that too. Not bad. Max five of losses. Average hold time for a winning trade is 26 minutes. Average hold time for a losing trade is 19 minutes. Not bad. Profit factor of over two. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll take it for sure. Not a bad little graph here. Kind of shows you the battle I faced prior to that, but... Not too shabby here. Cool thing is, like I said, I streamed all of this live. So it's like I can't fake it if I wanted to. Uh, everybody sees my wins and losses because I stream every day live. So that's the fun part. You know, and it's funny, like the channel gets all of these haters, right? We have all of these haters on this channel. 
And they're always telling me, oh, I'm a terrible trader. I'm wrong. You know, they can't wait to trade against me and yada, yada, yada. But when I go on a 15 day green streak, it's just silence from the haters, just silence because they can't say anything. They can't say anything, you know. And so it's funny, like once I start, if I put in a few days of losses, if I lose one or two times in a week, watch, you'll see them come out. It'll be funny. It's actually humorous at this point, though, because it's just silence when I do well. Just silence. Yeah, for sure, Sid. Honestly, like I said, I kind of enjoy it at this point because it's like they can't say anything. It feels good to just make it so that they can't say anything. You know, you get a lot of haters. They want to say what they want, but they can't say, I don't trade well. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it's like I said, hey, appreciate that, John. Thanks, brother. Appreciate it, man. Honestly, like I said, I'm excited. The reason I'm excited, and this is a huge reason, is that in the trading world, here's the thing. In the trading world, there is a lot of debate on whether day trading can actually be a profitable endeavor. You know, there's a lot of debate on whether you can actually ever be successful as a day trader and whether it is statistically possible to be a successful day trader. You know, some people think that all the educators out there are fake and that they're just pretending and so there's a lot of debate out there on whether it's actually possible to be a successful day trader on average. And uh, one thing that I'm especially proud of is that I'm really one of the only people in the trading world that live streams their day trading every single day. You know, I don't think there's really anywhere else in the day trading world, specifically day trading world, that actually live streams all of their trades every day. And actually shows their account balance, shows their stats, and like shows their entire profit and loss every single day. I don't think there's anybody else that really does that. Um, and I think that most of them do it for a reason, that they're somewhat hiding from it. And so it feels really good to be kind of one of the, you know, small percentage that actually is fully transparent. And the fact that I can go on a 15-day green streak while showing everybody everything and streaming it all live... That's something I'm super proud of because, again, I think there, I think I'm definitely in the huge minority of people who are actually showing people everything. And so it, it feels good to actually do it and say, yeah, you know, technical analysis does work. Uh, technical analysis does work. And, uh, you know. I mean, we're not gonna start. Uh, we're not gonna start naming people. We're not, we're not gonna start naming competitors here, but uh, yeah, that's cool. Hey, man, listen. I hope people do it. I I, I think the trading world needs that. Um, I think the trading world honestly needs that because again, what you get a lot of times, what you get a lot of times with, with uh with YouTubers and gurus out there is that they'll they'll say they made all of this money, but again, they're not streaming it live, and most of the time they're hiding their account balance as well. And again, I mean, they're doing that for a reason. You know, they're not showing you their account balance. It's not because they're worried about something else. They're doing that because they don't want you to see what their account is actually at. You know, they could have three losses in a day and then upload the one winning trade they had, like, look how much money I made, when really they could have lost a few thousand, but they're just pretending. You know, and that's what the YouTube world is filled with. And a lot of times the haters I get are haters that come at me because they are like super dedicated to one of these people out there faking their gains. And like I call people out on it. And so they, they get mad at me for it when really they should look at them like what, like why, why would they hide everything if they're being transparent, you know? That's not necessarily true, John. Um, listen, if if gurus if gurus showed all of their trades live, it should give them way more credibility. You know, if if a guru showed all of his trades live, that should make their credibility go through the roof. You know, and like I said, I think. All right. 
Listen, bro. Like I said, I told you once, we're not gonna we're not gonna keep posting people's uh, handles, and so sorry, bro, that you're banned. Um, I warned you once, man. I tried to give you a shot, but uh, but no. What I'm saying though is that people's credibility there's a there's a huge reason. Like you'll see people that post every day green. You know, they're posting their results every single day green. They're saying, look how much money I made. They're never actually posting a losing day. You know, the people that don't stream. You know, what you'll see a lot is they're posting their videos every day. They're like, look how much money I made, you know, quick hundred dollar gain. They're hiding their account balance and they're essentially just showing you, you know, they're the recording of that one certain trade. You don't see what their actual account balance or PL on the day is. You just see their PL in that one trade. Then, you know, whenever they try to live stream, they don't actually, if they do live stream, they uh they only do it once every blue moon. But when they live stream, they start taking big losses, you know, and then they stop live streaming and they go back to regular uploads. And then all of a sudden they're going back to crazy green streaks and every day's green, never having a losing day. And it's just obvious at a certain point. And I get it. You know, they don't want to scare their followers off if they're honest with their followers. They don't want to scare them off and say, hey, look, you know, I'm actually not as good of a trader as I'm pretending to be. You know, Uh, I do lose yada 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 but they don't want to do that because that's going to hurt their brand and so instead they just kind of fake their gains and that's okay i understand it you know but i think the trading world needs realness trading traders need to see what it's really like you know they don't need to see a, a highlight reel of what trading is like traders need to see what it's really like and so that's the problem is that you know traders need to see what it's actually like and in that, you know, it's just tough, man. It's tough. Uh, I get it. You know, as a YouTuber, you want to build your brand up. And sometimes live streaming every day is going to hurt your brand. But that's what traders need to see. They need to see how real it is. But again, I mean, one thing I'm happy with about my channel is that I can kind of show people that it actually is possible to day trade successfully. You know, it's possible. Uh, You could say day trading is completely random and that you're just going to get random results and that you're not actually going to be able to be successful and that it's all just luck. It's all gambling. You know, and that's fine. I understand that mindset. But like I said, I went, today's my 15th green day in a row. And the odds of that happening by pure chance are pretty low. And so, and this isn't the first time. And so, it, this isn't just one big gain I've made. This is a bunch of small base hits that have added up to decent accuracy. Uh, what are my thoughts? Newbie and new to your channel, great job. Can you review some scanning methods? Uh, I use trade ideas. Um, the middle here is trade ideas. Um, and so I just use trade ideas for scanners and like, like I said, I'm not really trying to brag. I mean, I'm proud of myself for going 15 days green and all that. And I know I keep saying that, but what I'm really trying to do is show people that it is actually possible to be successful day trading that, you know, again, I know there's certain people like Anton Creel and the other guy, I can't remember his name that created thinkorswim. They both don't believe in short-term trading. They don't think it's actually possible to be successful with short-term technical analysis based trading. And that's what I'm saying. I'm a huge, uh, I'm a huge believer in technical analysis, and it definitely works. Um, again, it wouldn't be possible for me to do what I did if it, if it didn't work. Um, let's see. Let's see, what is it? Let's see. New to your channel, great job. Or what are your thoughts on warrior trading? Honestly, I know people hate on warrior trading, but I think the stuff warrior trading teaches is legitimate stuff. Um, I'll put it this way. I like warrior trading better than 90% of the other big gurus. I like warrior trading better than 90% of the other gurus. Uh, we have a completely different style. You know, warrior trading is it's not the same style of trading that I do. You know, I have a very mid to high cap, short biased 
range bound trading method. You know, I, that's kind of what I do. I trade mid and high cap stocks, almost solely short bias, and I trade range bound trades. I take advantage of the short term range of a stock, and that's basically what I do. Uh, Warrior Trading, on the other hand, trades almost solely low cap penny stocks, and it's almost solely momentum breakout trading. It's almost solely momentum breakout trading. And so we just have a completely different style. But like you'll hear me talk about the one minute pullback. That's a warrior trading strategy that they teach. You will hear me talk about some other stuff. Is it worth it to spend thousands of dollars on a course? I mean, I don't know. I think that's all subjective, um, you know. But I do think that some of the stuff warrior trading teaches is real stuff. You know, and so I do think that there is value to be had in some of the stuff they teach. Like I said, do I... Do I think you really need to spend six grand on a, or however much it is? I don't know how much it is. Do I think you really need to? Probably not. But if you have the money and you know you have the money to spend, I think it's a good little you know initial entry to the trading world. I, I you know it's all subjective, but I don't think I think the stuff they teach is real. I'll say that. Right. I mean, like like I said, I can't say. I mean that's not necessarily. Uh, here's the thing. I you can say warrior trading is isn't real or whatever, but like I said, it's just about what they teach to me. You know, like listen, like I've seen a lot of lot of different curriculum in the trading world. I've seen uh, I've seen some really good ones and I've seen some really bad ones. Okay, um, some of these gurus are selling literally five year old five over five year old DVDs for a thousand dollars. You know, and in the trading world, five years is a pretty big amount of time. You know, it might not, some of the strategies might be obsolete five years later. And so some of these gurus are selling $1,000 DVDs that are over five years old. And they're just ripping people off. And I've described it, you know, and at least, I know warrior trading isn't doing that. You know, warrior trading, the stuff they teach is legit, in my opinion. But... Like I said, there's some of them that some of the gurus are selling $1,000 DVDs and they're f over five years old and they're just, they're just nonsense. They're just straight up nonsense. And I, it's, it's kind of funny, like you'll have the followers of some of these gurus and you'll have some of the followers here and it, I, the best way I can describe it is like a pyramid scheme. You ever, you ever tried to talk somebody out of a multi-level marketing period scheme and they will defend it with their life. They'll defend its honor. They'll never admit it's a pyramid scheme. They'll always act like it's a great business opportunity. And they'll just defend it, defend it, defend it. Even if you, even if they know you're not going to buy it. And you're like, hey, look, this is a pyramid scheme. It's obvious. And they'll just defend it with their life. And the reason they do that is because it hurts too much. They've spent so much money on this that it hurts too much to say, you know what? I got ripped off. You know what? I got ripped off. These people you know, tricked me into buying it. It wasn't worth it. But you'll, they'll never admit to that. And like I said, it hurts too much to be able to be introspective enough to tell that truth. And that's what you get a lot of times in the trading world as well. You get people that spend four or $5,000 on these courses. They've invested so much money into these courses that they will never look at it objectively and say, you know what, this was not worth it. They kind of lie to themselves and say, you know what, it was worth it. I learned so much. And anytime anybody questions it, they'll say, you know what, I learned so much doing that. And like I said, it's kind of like a pyramid scheme, you know. And I'm not saying I'm not saying the courses themselves are pyramid schemes. I'm saying that trying to talk somebody out, trying to talk one of their students out of doing it and spending that ridiculous amount of money on it is moot. There's no point. You know, they're going to defend it no matter what. Like I said, probably because they've spent so much money on it. No, I'm not talking about warrior trading, actually. Like I said, warrior trading actually has legitimate content, I think. And that's just my opinion. If you disagree, that's okay. But I like warrior trading stuff. I think I think the stuff they teach is real. You just got to make sure that's the style of trading you want. You know, it's more scalping-based momentum breakout trading on low-cap penny stocks is mostly what Ross and Warrior teach. And like I said, I think the strategies they teach are legit. And I think uh, the classes they teach are legit, you know. But everybody's different, and you do your own research.
And like I said, I'm not going to name names. I'm not, I'm not one of those guys that... I don't like all the drama in the trading world. I'm pretty passive. I just like staying out of the drama. Like, yeah, I rant about some of these gurus, and that's fine. And that's probably one of the reasons I get hate here as well. Just because some of the gurus don't like me. Because uh, I tell people the truth. Um, But, you know, some of them are legit, you know. Like, my two favorite gurus are Warrior Trading and Investors Underground. You know, I think uh, Warrior Trading and Investors Underground are legit. At least in my opinion. I'm not going to say the ones I don't think are legit. And here's the problem with gurus in general. Right? Here's the problem with them. Is that they trade... They're in the trading world for so long. You know, some of them have been trading for years and years and years. Right? But again, you know, 10 years from now, the strategies I'm using in the market will probably be obsolete. And so if I'm still teaching the same stuff in 10 years that I'm teaching now that information is going to be obsolete to a certain extent. And I can't keep selling that information. I have to continue building an edge in the market and continue learning. And some of the worst gurus, like I said, are selling really outdated stuff, really outdated strategies, really outdated courses, really outdated DVDs. Because they might have been good traders 10 or 15 years ago, but the market has changed. And some of that stuff is obsolete. And so that's the worst deals in the trading world is, again, gurus that have been doing it for a long time that are still teaching the same stuff they did 10 or 15 years ago um because the market changes um some strategies won't you know specifically long-term strategies will probably continue working but there's just certain ways the market changes drastically in 10 years You know, market changes drastically in 10 years. Strategies change year after year, you know. And and so the reason the reason strategies stop working is because traders stop looking for them. And they kind of traders evolve and look for different strategies. And the more people that are looking and searching for a specific strategy, the more momentum it's going to have. And so right now, you know, bull flags, bear flags, everybody's looking for those. Uh, short strategies, low of the day breaks. And so certain things, I'm sure certain strategies will work. But again, in 10 years, I can't say whether they will or they won't. But I can say that some of them might be obsolete to a certain extent. But I, I can't say for certain either. You never really know in the market. Yeah, that is it for me today, guys. Hey, appreciate all the support today. Um, you know, we got a lot of people out here showing your love, showing love. So appreciate all the support, guys. Yeah, it's been fun. But like I said, I think to break it down here, and this is what I think traders need to understand, to really break this down, trading is not a get-rich-quick scheme. You're not going to... I know a lot of traders build up these big hopes and dreams in the trading world, and a lot of that is what's advertised and promoted to them by some gurus. But trading is not a get-rich-quick scheme. For most, it's going to take at least six months, most likely over a year, to start, to, to start showing any type of consistent gains. It's usually going to take over a year to show any type of consistency in the market. There are some outliers. You know, like certain people are going to do well right away, but they are the exception to the rule and they are not the rule itself. Most people are going to take at least a year to learn how to do things right. And that's okay. But what it's not, it's not a get rich quick scheme. You're not going to deposit $5,000 into your first trading account this month and then all of a sudden just start paying your bills for the rest of the year. If that's the mentality or hope and dreams you have, you need to, ha you need to have a little bit more realistic expectations. Um... Think of trading like any type of other skill, any type of trade, no pun intended, or skill that you learn. You know, you might have to go to school for that skill for six months to a year, maybe more, and you might have to pay some money in tuition to learn that skill. But once you learn it, that'll be a skill that you'll have for the rest of your life. But you can't, you know, you can't just jump right in without learning, and it's going to take time. And so that's the best advice. The best advice I can give to traders is just take it slow. Right. 
I mean, for me, it took about two and a half. And it took it took years, you know. It did take years. It took about two and a half years for me. I started trading in 2016. It is 2019. And so, yeah, it took years. But it is possible. Um, and like I said, you can see my graph here. Happy with my graph for sure this month. Definitely showing some consistency here. Maintaining roughly 65% accuracy. So I'll take it for sure. But yeah, guys, I'm going to go ahead and close it down. Sorry for my rants. Uh, like I said, one of the ways we keep this stream always free, go check out TradeNet for $3.99 in their intro package. You can get 14000 in buying power to trade with. So you can actually trade with 14000 in buying power. There's also no PDT rule, so you can day trade as much as you want. Commissions are pretty cheap if you use small sizing. Like one of the ways I can take one or 200 shares of AMD is because my commissions for that trade is like $4 total for you know a round trip. And so ridiculously cheap commissions if you use small sizing as well. And if you want to check that out, I think there's some huge benefits to it. I think most new traders will deposit you know one or $2,000 into a conventional broker and end up losing that. And so they're down thousands where you could go the trade net route, only pay $3.99 and get decent buying power. You can actually short with trade net. You actually have a shorting ability and you can also get around the PDT rule. And if you lose your trade net account, which I think most traders probably will, then you're only down $400. And if you go the conventional route, you're down thousands most of the time. And so I think it makes a lot of sense. There's a link if you want to go check that out. Uh, if you want to see a complete walkthrough of them where I break down their pros and cons, I can post that video here as well. And I really do break down their pros and cons. So here's that link if you want to check that out. One of the ways we keep the stream free. And then also, they do have a challenge here. So they have what's called the TradeNet Demo Challenge, and it's completely free to enter. At the very least, you get a $10,000 demo account to trade with for a week. And if you can make $500 in net profits in one week of trading in that free account, then you win a free intro package. And it's completely free to enter, like I said. And so if you want to check, take advantage of that, again, you know, it's completely free to enter. At the very least, you'll get a demo account. But if you can make $500 in net profits while following their rules, they do have some rules that you want to look into, then you win yourself a free account. And so it's, you know, it's not going to hurt to try it out. At the very least, you get a free demo account. And there's that link as well. Um, what else? Let's see. Oh, also go check out trade ideas. I had somebody ask me about my scanners. And so if you want to check out my trade ideas scanner, I can post that link here as well. And uh, like I said, go check out trade ideas, super customizable and dynamic scanners. And so if you want to take advantage of that, there's the link for trade ideas. And uh, yeah, guys, good luck for the rest of the day. We'll see you all a little bit later. That is 15 green days in a row, all streamed live. So super proud of my trading. We'll see if we can keep the green streak going. Uh, also, this week, that's four green days this week. No losing trades, I think, this week. I don't think I've had any losing trades this week. So definitely been pretty accurate on my first week back to my live account. And we'll see if we can keep that going. Hit that subscribe button. Mitch and I do this live every weekday morning. So don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. Click the like button to support this channel. And uh, yeah, good luck in the markets, guys. We'll see you all a little bit later.